Hello, I am Dr. Lanice and I am coming to you for my Monday Medical Minutes. I'm a doctor and I take care of sick babies for a living. So I wanted to start doing some videos to talk to parents about what to expect when the unexpected happens and you find out that after delivery, your baby is getting admitted to the NICU. So sick babies get admitted to the NICU, which stands for Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. This is the part of the hospital where sick babies go and we take care of them until they go home. So there's many different reasons that this can happen, but the one that I'm going to talk to you about right now is called chorioamnionitis. So your first question might be, what is chorioamnionitis? And that is a technical term that just means that there is an infection in the uterus. The tissues and the fluid and placenta can all be affected. Your OB doctor will be the one to make this diagnosis and some of the signs that they will be looking for will be a fever in mom during labor, the baby might have an elevated heartbeat, mom might have a fast heartbeat, they may talk about prolonged rupture of membranes, meaning that your fluid has been broken for a long time. And they also might mention that there's either a bad odor, smell, or uh, discoloration to the amniotic fluid. All of these could be signs. Another one would be if they press on your uterus and it hurts, um, a tender uterus. All of this is part of the diagnosis for chorioamnionitis. So I take care of the baby, so why do I care about this? I care about this because the baby lives in the uterus. So if there is an infection there, then potentially the baby can be affected as well. Uh, this could lead to a very serious infection infection, bacteria could get into the baby's blood, it could spread to the spinal fluid and basically lead to meningitis and kind of go all over the baby's body. And the baby could become very, very sick with the worst complication being, unfortunately, that the baby might die. So it's very important that once this is diagnosed that we treat and take care of the baby. So the bad news is there may be an infection, your baby has to be admitted to the NICU. The good news is though, we can treat this. So we already know that chorioamnionitis or infection in the uterus usually occurs in about 2% of pregnancies. For those moms that are affected, about 10% of the babies may be infected. So the good news is not all babies will be affected. The problem is we can't guarantee which 10% will be involved or will get the infection. So it's very important that we screen and treat all babies because we wouldn't want to miss one and have them develop a very serious infection. So the first thing to expect, one, your baby is going to be admitted to the NICU. The second is, just like you mom, for all their moms, you come in and they'll put in an IV in your hand or your arm or somewhere so that they can give you medications and fluids. We will need to do a small stick for your baby to put in an IV into the vein so that we can give medications. Because um, this potentially could become a very serious infection, we need to give the baby antibiotics and we can't do it by mouth. This is something that we have to treat with IV because it's just a much more effective way to treat the infection. So we'll also need to take some blood from your baby and that's because we need to do labs and tests. So one of the labs that we would send off is something called a CBC and when we do that we're looking at the white blood cell count because we know that that is a marker for infection. If it's very high or it's very low we worry about infection. The other lab test that we would send off is something called a blood culture and this goes down to the lab. They basically put it in a machine and they watch and see if there's going to be any bugs, any bacteria that grows there. If it's growing it means there is an infection in the blood. If it's negative, then nothing grows. We won't know that answer for at least two days because they have to watch and monitor the blood culture for two days until they can safely say there is no infection in the blood. Now, one thing to keep in mind, baby uh, may come out and may be crying and um, look like a, a normal baby, breathing on their own, not needing any extra support. But again, this is something that can be in the blood and isn't always obvious. So this is why we treat and screen all babies. So in a baby who otherwise um, is doing well, will most likely put in an IV. Some babies come out and they look very sick. They don't cry right away. They don't cry on their own. They don't breathe on their own and require us to help them with their breathing and sometimes help them with their heart rate and do other things to help the baby. These babies we may need to put in a tube or a catheter through the belly button and the reason why is that in the umbilical cord there's blood vessels there. There are two arteries and a vein and so we are able to put this tube or catheter into the veins so that we can give fluids or medications in a very sick baby. So these will be one of the two ways in which we can give antibiotics to your baby.
Parents typically like to know what's the risk of giving antibiotics to the babies. Are they safe? So these medications have been used over and over and over and have been shown to be safe in babies. That doesn't mean that there's zero risk. Anytime you're treating with a medication, there is a potential risk for side effects. So there can be different ones that are used, but uh, the ones that we use at my hospital are ampicillin and gentamicin. So ampicillin is very, very safe. If anything, um, there may be a reaction with a rash, which very, very rarely happens. Um, the other medication that we use, gentamicin, does have some side effects. One of those can be that it can affect the baby's kidneys and the other is that it can affect the baby's hearing. Again, very, very low risk of this happening. However, it is a potential side effect. However, when you think about the risk of not treating the baby for infection and the baby potentially getting, you know, septus or meningitis and being very, very sick, the when you compare that to the minimal risk of treating with the antibiotic, it's still very safe to use. In fact, the side effects become more of an issue for a baby who has to be treated with that medication for many, many days, even up to weeks. So like I mentioned before, 10% of the babies are infected. So the majority of the babies that get treated with this medication are only going to be on it for one or two days. And we re really don't see these side effects in these babies. It's typically in babies who have had a much longer duration of exposure. So the big takeaway point is that um, for the majority of babies in the majority of cases, it is safe to treat with these medications. Um, and again, once we treat them, it will be for two days. And if the blood culture is negative after two days, baby is doing well, then we'll be able to stop the antibiotics. So the next thing that parents want to know is what does this mean for the future of my baby um, having been exposed to chorioamnionitis? So nothing. We are treating an acute infection, a acute process around the time of delivery. And if um, all the lab testing and the blood work comes back negative, baby is um, breathing in room air on their own, doing well, looking great, then this, this process, this concern for infection is over. It does not put your baby at increased risk for infections later on in the future. It has absolutely no impact or outcome on their development for a baby who comes in, gets the antibiotics, the workup is negative, and had no other um, serious issues or conditions going on at the time of delivery. So what is the criteria for going home? Criteria for going home is the blood test, the lab works look good, they're normal, the blood culture is negative, your baby is off any breathing support, your baby is eating well, uh, your baby is not losing too much weight, um, meaning more than 10% of their body weight, because we know all babies are going to lose weight in the first week of life. But as long as they're doing all of those things well, then yay, in two days your baby gets to go home with you. So key takeaway points that I want you to know, if your OB is worried or concerned that there's infection in the uterus, then your baby will get admitted to the NICU. We will need to put in an IV or a tube in through the belly button to give the baby medications. We will need to do some blood work and lab tests. And if everything is negative, then in two days, your baby is going to go home and this will not have any impact on future infe infections or later on for their development. So once again, this is Dr. Lenise coming to you with my Mon Monday Medical Minute. Thank you for tuning in and please come back to find more common updates about what to do when the unexpected happens and your baby is admitted to the NICU. Thank you.